Is there hope to find love at the least dateable college? Man. Y'all wanna say this on camera? Hope for you, yes. Babson. <laughs> Babson College has been ranked number one for building businesses, but dead last for building relationships. In 2014, Business Insider ranked our alumni less dateable than those at any other college, noting that we may be too focused on our careers to find love. But a decade has not passed since that ranking, so today we're going to be interviewing single guys, single girls, couples, and even a professor to see if this has changed, and if not, whether there is hope to find love at the least dateable college. Would you mind starting by saying your name and a little bit about your background? My name is Jose and I'm from Providence, Rhode Island. I'm Cody and I'm from Texas. My name is Cassidy and I'm from Virginia. My name is Thomas and I'm from Caribbean Haiti. My name is Ava Saad and I'm from Detroit, Michigan. My name is Anderson and I'm originally from the Dominican Republic. My name is Kirk McKinney and I'm from Westwood, Massachusetts. My name is Lillian Chu and I'm from Beijing, China. I am Dr. Krista Hill Cummings and I have spent my entire career studying uh, relationships and communication. Perfect. <laughs> so the topic of this video is finding love at the least dateable college, okay? You might be aware, 10 years ago, Babson College was ranked as the least dateable college in America. So I'm curious if you ever heard about this ranking. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I think everyone kind of talks about that. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. yeah. I actually did know about that ranking. I found out literally on my move-in day about the ranking. And I looked at my dad and I was like, yo, I think I made the wrong decision. <laughs> And from that point forward, man, it's been rough out here at Babson. <laughs> what characteristics of Babson students do you think would justify this ranking? <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble here. Um, my perceptions and I would say the, the data I've collected, basically what students have shared with me, I think it's the priorities of Babson students. I think you come to a business school because your priority is your career. You build your life, you build your schedule, all around that. And that's great for your career, not great for relationships. <laughs> I think it, part of it is just that our school, everybody does the exact same things here. And I don't think two like business heads are really like a good match for each mm -hmm. other. People are so focused on their careers and making money. Yeah. It really isn't the best for building a relationship. Like people are gonna make a relationship with you to like network and like possibly build their own future, but not to build a future relationship, which is can be very hard. I think everyone's a bit narcissistic. They really care about themselves and their business and their career aspirations and they don't really care who they have to backstab to make it happen. Personally, I think this is very dateable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Aww. I feel left out. <laughs> Are you currently in a relationship? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, four years deep. Yes, I am. I have been married for 10 years, actually. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, we are. what are you? <laughs> uh, so you were in a relationship since high school. Yeah, yeah. I'm a junior in college and we've been together since uh, juniors in high school. They don't yeah. make them like that no more. Mm -mm. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about her? Um, she's very reliable. She's always willing to help and, and be supportive. Cassidy's one of the most supportive person I've ever met. Like I was in the hospital for about a week and every single day, Kobe, when like as soon as like it was time for like visitor hours to come in, Cassidy was already there before then. I honestly couldn't have asked for someone better. Favorite thing? Yeah. Everything. <laughs> yeah, everything. <laughs> Actually, probably our Wi-Fi. Yeah, our Wi-Fi. What does that mean? It's our secret <laughs> language that we don't have to communicate with each other with words, but through our Wi-Fi. Yeah, our communication is so deep between each other that a lot of the times we find ourselves saying the same thing at the same time, knowing what each other are going to say before we even say it. Same frequency. Yes. Wow. Same frequency. That's an easy way of saying it. What I love about her the most is like the fact that whenever like we have like uh, problems or discussions and stuff like that, we are both in the same mindset of like, we're gonna like figure this out. And like that's very rare because there's a lot of people who be like, if you're not like this, if you're not like that, then I'm, you know, I'm done kind of thing. And it's like, you have to understand it. You have to accept people as they are and then chip away. You know what I mean? Kind of like a sculpture. Yeah. And you're chipping away at each other to make each other better. I think sense of humor has always been there, but now, you know, we have three kids and seeing him as a dad and being an 
awesome dad is is really it's really cool to see someone you know I met him when he was 22 I was 21 like we were idiots and <laughs> now to yeah. see him as like a grown person <laughs> it's really cool to, to not you know you watch your kids grow but you also watch your partner grow which is really fun is there anything you don't like about each other um <laughs> yeah oh I, I have some yeah <laughs> like like can I tell like, you this <laughs> every morning Kobe right <laughs> She gets up, she, she looks at me, and she smiles, and she's giving me that look, and then she farts. <laughs> what? And then it's like we're having fart competitions. Okay, and, but, but I usually <laughs> win, though, because like, hers doesn't smell like anything, but mine... His fart smells so bad. <laughs> so bad. Yeah, like, like, I gag. I almost throw up every <laughs> time. It gasses out my room for, like, ten minutes. But I think it usually starts with you, so it's like I have to have a comeback. <laughs> I've heard this one quote that you like someone because of something, but then you love someone despite their flaws. Mm, so mm -hmm. like you like because you love despite. I'm curious your thoughts on that. I agree with that. Like, and I think that comes back to what I was talking about with my research earlier, right? Like, once you have that accurate view, you have to accept that person for those flaws. And I will constantly tell my students, and I'll tell my kids this too when they're ready to date, you're not gonna change someone. And so you, as a person, the only thing you can do is change the way you think about it or change your behavior. And so that behavior might be not being with this person or that might be changing your cognition. So you know what? They might be messy, but they're kind and they're smart and they're funny. And that's much more important than if there's a shirt on the floor. 99% <laughs> of the days. <laughs> <laughs> when did you first know that you were in love? Ooh, wow, that's a great question. I think like, when you love someone, you're willing to help them unconditionally and like make sacrifices for them. It's hard to describe, I'm not gonna lie. It's like a, a feeling of, of security with somebody. They remind you of all your favorite things and all your favorite things just start to become part of them as well, you know? I feel like as I've gotten older, I've been able to understand that love is not just always being happy, but somebody that you're comfortable with, someone that you're always able to just express yourself. Even when you're down, you're able to go to them and, and you know that you can rely on them. I think uh, true love, it's more so about what I'm going to give, not what I'm going to receive. I'm not expecting anything back from the person. I just really care about their well-being. I think the difference between like and love is like is if you have $100, you will give that person $50 and then you'll keep $50. And love is, if you have $100, you'll give that person $99, and the $1 left, you pay for a bus ticket and go to see that person. <laughs> for me, there's this theory of love, right? So this theory, Sternberg's theory, triangular, it's a triangular theory of love. And it's that there's three pieces to love. There's passion, intimacy, and there's commitment. And passion is that like excitement to see somebody, it's that physical attraction, you know, and it is it is a form of love, but that intimacy and commitment is where I think I, and a lot of people start to feel like what feels like true love. So intimacy is when you feel like you're bonded with someone or you, you're belonging, you feel a part of them, you feel like you're a team. And commitment is this like idea of committing to one another, right? And what I love about this theory is all of these different feelings and experiences and factors are different for every relationship. So some relationships have just passion early on, first few months, typically. Some relationships have passion and intimacy. Some relationships just have commitment um, and they don't have those other factors. And to me, I felt love when beyond passion got added in. So that's how you define love? That's how I would define love. Have either of you ever said that you love each other? Every day. <laughs> really? I love you. Yeah, I love you too. Do you have any future plans together? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll say, I'll, we'll, we'll go like near future. Do you have any plans for Valentine's Day? I mean... <laughs> 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 say it. <laughs> um, I have managerial accounting. <laughs> <laughs> and principles of marketing and history of the modern Middle East. So, yeah. <laughs> what that are your sounds plans? very romantic. <laughs> what are your plans? Oh. I am a broke college student, but I feel like not everything has to be with materials. So I was thinking of going to like the foundry and making like a, like a note card. Hmm. Uh, like, you know, I have, I wrote this one down. It was, um, 
The note is gonna say, although you deserve the world, I can't offer you much materials, but I do give you my heart. So then I was gonna do that. Are you uh, gonna ask me to be your Valentine? You already my Valentine, so like. But I, you have to ask. Okay, will you be my Valentine? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, good. I got a, I got a date. I got a date. Let's go. <laughs> what are you gonna do now? Uh, gotta think of something special for the special lady, of course. Aww. I mean, in my opinion, it's like you don't need a day to show your love. It's like every day is Valentine's Day with us. That's how I like to look at it. Mm. <laughs> how do you feel about that? Mm. I agree. But... <laughs> Alright, what do you want to do on Valentine's Day? No, you gotta say it. <laughs> I have to say it. Let's watch a movie. Think about it. Let's go out to dinner too. Let's go out to dinner. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Alright. Um, what is your best relationship advice? My best relationship advice is to just prioritize yourself and love yourself first. But I don't know. Love a lot. Love everyone. Love everything. Like love is such a privilege and don't be scared of it. Being transparent and stuff like if you have someone in mind, go talk to her or go talk to him because that's honestly like the one step to go because if you actually do like somebody and, and you just keep it in, and I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I think the communication is kind of key and it, it, it sounds so cliche. I know everybody says communication is key, but it's not just communicating, but the way you communicate, you know, you don't want to say you're the problem, right, that I'm having. Instead, sharing, you know, I'm feeling this way and being receptive to that. Sometimes me and my girlfriend, we just like don't even face each other. We like talk back to back <laughs> and we, we talk about our feelings because sometimes I'll say stuff and I'll see her face like and, and, and that kind of that hypes me up. It's like, what do you what do you mean that face, you know? So I feel like if you're able to talk about it and you're, you're still there with the person, but you're just like not facing them and you can't interrupt each other. You need to listen and not just hear. For me, it's you know you're ready when you know you're not ready. Because yes. this whole time I was thinking like, I'm not looking for a relationship. So like no matter what happens at the end of the day, it's fine. If you're searching for a relationship, you're probably gonna end up with someone that you're not actually like best fit for. You have to find yourself and, and know yourself before you can have someone else in your life. I think a good relationship is you being yourself, that person comes and help you be more you, and then you help that person to be more of him. And then you guys come together and be a better version of both of the people. So overall, there is hope. There's always <laughs> hope. Love is all around. <laughs> like, go through life with open arms and love will find you. Don't always go looking. Just let love come to you. Do you think there's hope for me? Of course! <laughs> Anybody would be lucky to be in a relationship with this guy. <laughs> Aww, thank you so much. Of course. I'll, do you want me to write your recommendation letter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> you can post it on your LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, why not? I mean, you're tall. Girls like tall guys. You're, you're hardworking. You're consistent. Why, why not? At Babson. And you're kind. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Hope for you, yes. Babson, mm, no. I don't think they're your vibe. Yes, you're a very special guy. I think don't associate yourself with the school. You are you, mm. no matter where you are. So if you can find love anywhere else, you can find love here. That's a great way to end, I feel. Yeah. Good job. Is there any other questions you wanted to cover? Yeah, I got a question for you. Oh. Do you have any advice for the students here? I don't think I'm qualified <laughs> to give advice, but that's why I'm making this video trying to figure it out. At the end of the day, it's clear that while the stereotypes here are somewhat affirmed, there's definitely hope to find love anywhere. As for whether I could find love at Babson though, there were some mixed opinions. And maybe I should just stop actively searching and trust that love will come into my life when the time is right. Or maybe I just need to go to a different school.